An optical amplifier is a device that amplifies an optical signal directly, without the need to first convert it to an electrical signal. An optical amplifier may be thought of as a laser without an optical cavity, or one in which feedback from the cavity is suppressed. Optical amplifiers are important in optical communication and laser physics. There are several different physical mechanisms that can be used to amplify a light signal, which correspond to the major types of optical amplifiers. In doped fiber amplifiers and bulk lasers, stimulated emission in the amplifier's gain medium causes amplification of incoming light. In semiconductor optical amplifiers, electron hole recombination occurs. In Raman amplifiers, Raman scattering of incoming light with phonons in the lattice of the gain medium produces photons coherent with the incoming photons. Parametric amplifiers use parametric amplification. Laser amplifiers, almost any laser active gain medium can be pumped to produce gain for light at the wavelength of a laser made with the same material as its gain medium. Such amplifiers are commonly used to produce high power laser systems. Special types such as regenerative amplifiers and chirp pulse amplifiers are used to amplify ultra short pulses. Equals doped fiber amplifiers equals. Doped fiber amplifiers are optical amplifiers that use a doped optical fiber as a gain medium to amplify an optical signal. They are related to fiber lasers. The signal to be amplified and a pump laser are multiplexed in the doped fiber, and the signal is amplified through interaction with the doping ions. The most common example is the erbium doped fiber amplifier, where the core of a silica fiber is doped with trivalent erbium ions and can be efficiently pumped with a laser at a wavelength of 980 nanometers or 1480 nanometers, and exhibits gain in the 1550 nanometers region. An erbium doped waveguide amplifier is an optical amplifier that uses a waveguide to boost an optical signal. Amplification is achieved by stimulated emission of photons from dopant ions in the doped fiber. The pump laser excites ions into a higher energy from where they can decay via stimulated emission of a photon at the signal wavelength back to a lower energy level. The excited ions can also decay spontaneously or even through non-radiative processes involving interactions with phonons of the glass matrix. These last two decay mechanisms compete with stimulated emission reducing the efficiency of light amplification. The amplification window of an optical amplifier is the range of optical wavelengths for which the amplifier yields a usable gain. The amplification window is determined by the spectroscopic properties of the dopant ions, the glass structure of the optical fiber, and the wavelength and power of the pump laser. Although the electronic transitions of an isolated ion are very well defined, Broadening of the energy levels occurs when the ions are incorporated into the glass of the optical fiber and thus the amplification window is also broadened. This broadening is both homogeneous and inhomogeneous. Homogeneous broadening arises from the interactions with phonons of the glass, while inhomogeneous broadening is caused by differences in the glass sites where different ions are hosted. Different sites expose ions to different local electric fields which shifts the energy levels via the Stark effect. In addition, the Stark effect also removes the degeneracy of energy states having the same total angular momentum. Thus, for example, the trivalent erbium ion has a ground state with J equals 15 slash 2, and in the presence of an electric field splits into J plus 1 half equals 8 sublevels with slightly different energies. The first excited state has J equals 13 slash 2 and therefore a stark manifold with 7 sublevels. Transitions from the J equals 13 slash 2 excited state to the J equals 15 slash 2 ground state are responsible for the gain at 1.5 a micrometer wavelength. The gain spectrum of the EDFA has several peaks that are smeared by the above broadening mechanisms. The net result is a very broad spectrum. The broad gain bandwidth of fiber amplifiers make them particularly useful in wavelength division multiplexed communication systems as a single amplifier can be utilized to amplify all signals being carried on a fiber and whose wavelengths fall within the gain window. Equals basic principle of EDFA equals, a relatively high powered beam of light is mixed with the input signal using a wavelength selective coupler. The input signal and the excitation light must be at significantly different wavelengths. 
the mixed light is guided into a section of fiber with erbium ions included in the core. This high-powered light beam excites the erbium ions to their higher energy state. When the photons belonging to the signal at a different wavelength from the pump light meet the excited erbium atoms, the erbium atoms give up some of their energy to the signal and return to their lower energy state. A significant point is that the erbium gives up its energy in the form of additional photons which are exactly in the same phase and direction as the signal being amplified. So the signal is amplified along its direction of travel only. This is not unusual, when an atom a euro or well a euro it always gives up its energy in the same direction and phase as the incoming light. Thus all of the additional signal power is guided in the same fiber mode as the incoming signal. There is usually an isolator placed at the output to prevent reflections returning from the attached fiber. Such reflections disrupt amplifier operation and in the extreme case can cause the amplifier to become a laser. The erbium doped amplifier is a high gain amplifier. Equals noise equals, the principal source of noise in DFAs is amplified spontaneous emission, which has a spectrum approximately the same as the gain spectrum of the amplifier. Noise figure in an ideal DFA is 3 decibels, while practical amplifiers can have noise figure as large as 6 or Euro 8 decibels. As well as decaying via stimulated emission, electrons in the upper energy level can also decay by spontaneous emission, which occurs at random, depending upon the glass structure and inversion level. Photons are emitted spontaneously in all directions but a proportion of those will be emitted in a direction that falls within the numerical aperture of the fiber and are thus captured and guided by the fiber. Those photons captured may then interact with other dopant ions, and are thus amplified by stimulated emission. The initial spontaneous emission is therefore amplified in the same manner as the signals, hence the term amplified spontaneous emission. ASE is emitted by the amplifier in both the forward and reverse directions, but only the Ford ASE is a direct concern to system performance since that noise will co-propagate with the signal to the receiver where it degrades system performance. Counter-propagating ASE can, however, lead to degradation of the amplifier's performance since the ASE can deplete the inversion level and thereby reduce the gain of the amplifier. Equals gain saturation equals, gain is achieved in a DFA due to population inversion of the dopant ions. The inversion level of a DFA is set, primarily, by the power of the pump wavelength and the power at the amplified wavelengths. As the signal power increases, or the pump power decreases, the inversion level will reduce and thereby the gain of the amplifier will be reduced. This effect is known as gain saturation a euro as the signal level increases, the amplifier saturates and cannot produce any more output power, and therefore the gain reduces. Saturation is also commonly known as gain compression. To achieve optimum noise performance DFAs are operated under a significant amount of gain compression, since that reduces the rate of spontaneous emission, thereby reducing ASE. Another advantage of operating the DFA in the gain saturation region is that small fluctuations in the input signal power are reduced in the output amplified signal, smaller input signal powers experience larger gain while larger input powers see less gain. The leading edge of the pulse is amplified, until the saturation energy of the gain medium is reached. In some condition, the width of the pulse is reduced. Equals inhomogeneous broadening effects equals, due to the inhomogeneous portion of the line width broadening of the dopant ions, the gain spectrum has an inhomogeneous component and gain saturation occurs, to a small extent, in an inhomogeneous manner. This effect is known as spectral hole burning because a high power signal at one wavelength can burn a hole in the gain for wavelengths close to that signal by saturation of the inhomogeneously broadened ions. Spectral holes vary in width depending on the characteristics of the optical fiber in question and the power of the burning signal, but are typically less than 1 nanometer at the short wavelength end of the C band, and a few nm at the long wavelength end of the C band. The depth of the holes are very small though, making it difficult to observe in practice. Equals polarization effects equals, although the DFA is essentially a polarization independent amplifier, a small proportion of the dopant ions interact preferentially with certain polarizations and a small dependence on the polarization of the input signal may occur, 
typically 5th Z, and the gain is reasonably flat over a wide wavelength range. However, a number of challenges for Raman amplifiers prevented their earlier adoption. First, compared to the EDFAs, Raman amplifiers have relatively poor pumping efficiency at lower signal powers. Although a disadvantage, this lack of pump efficiency also makes gain clamping easier in Raman amplifiers. Second, Raman amplifiers require a longer gain fiber. However, this disadvantage can be mitigated by combining gain and the dispersion compensation in a single fiber. A third disadvantage of Raman amplifiers is a fast response time, which gives rise to new sources of noise, as further discussed below. Finally, there are concerns of nonlinear penalty in the amplifier for the WDM signal channels. Note. The text of an earlier version of this article was taken from the Public Domain Federal Standard 1037C. Optical Parametric Amplifier An optical parametric amplifier allows the amplification of a weak signal impulse in an one-centrosymmetric nonlinear medium. In contrast to the previously mentioned amplifiers, which are mostly used in telecommunication environments, this type finds its main application in expanding the frequency tunability of ultrafast solid state lasers. By using a non collinear interaction geometry, optical parametric amplifiers are capable of extremely broad amplification bandwidths. Recent achievements the adoption of high power fiber lasers as an industrial material processing tool has been ongoing for several years and is now expanding into other markets, including the medical and scientific markets. One key enhancement enabling penetration into the scientific market has been the improvements in high finesse fiber amplifiers, which are now capable of delivering single frequency line widths. 